Good morning. Hello, hello guys. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Come in. Living room is behind some nice views of the, the old town in Girona. Here, that's where the magic happens, obviously. Yeah. Got my uh, my bikes here, the trainer set up. So uh, yeah, I think today we'll hop on for a little bit and uh, yeah, then after go for a real ride. So uh, I'll show you around today. breakfast but actually I have to run in um, half an hour so I'm not eating much it's more to get the, the system started so getting a little bit of oats just to get the system going I hope to go to the toilet before I have to run because uh, that's a lot more pleasant than during so that's the main thing actually for uh, having a breakfast before my run people think I'm an artist but uh, that's actually uh, my girlfriend that put it up like that <laughs> one day when I went swimming and I came back and it was put up and it's actually funny it's um in Japan I have a, a super fan I would call her like a, a really uh, funny nice girl and every time I come she gives me a present and one of the years this was the present and I, I just think it's like yeah it's such an epic present I love it so uh, I had to put it over the, the ugly painting <laughs> Okay, so we're out here. Today we'll do, I think, uh, 15, 20 minutes warm up. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and then five times five minutes uh, LT1, which it's not really a hard workout. It's probably around 345 pace. Um, so just easy getting into it. I've been injured for a really long time. So yeah, these are my first kind of efforts back. So let's hope it feels good. And, uh, and then we're on the roll again. I think I did five months without running, so now uh, it's 15 and a half kilometers, so still I have to get used to it. I don't remember how I did like a half Ironman and stuff before uh, very fast, so like progress, progress. When you're doing a, a training day, you're always like quite relaxed and it's not, um, yeah, you're not nervous. Maybe sometimes when I have to do like a very hard session that I, I can be a little bit nervous as well but the race it's, it's completely different personally I prefer if it's uh, the race is in the evening because I'm not a morning person but um, I would say that usually I try to wake up four hours before the races so if it's in the afternoon or whatever I just sleep as long as possible because I once read somewhere in a study that you are the best four hours after you wake up so about the injury, can you explain it? The moment as it happened, do you remember it? Yeah, so the, the injury I have now, basically it started in June last year, June 2022. There was a race in Leeds in the United Kingdom and the finish was downhill, which is like kind of weird for us. But uh, yeah, like we had to run one kilometer, like 6% downhill. I was realizing that I had like too much energy left so I was really going like super fast on that downhill and passing people left and right. We always finish on, on a carpet and there was like a little dip under the carpet and I was going, well, I had like a sensor on my shoe. I was going more than 30 kilometers an hour. So it's like quite a serious crash. It's almost comparable to a bike crash. And I, I stepped into that hole kind of, I like fell through it. I started tumbling. I again slammed with my my leg on um on like some barriers on the side when i stood up and i lost again the places that i gained so i finished 12th i think in the end when i stood up i felt immediately like oof like i think i like broke my collarbone or my shoulder and like i came across the finish line like like doing this they took me in a wheelchair to like uh, to help me and i told them like oh yeah like i think I think it's okay, like just some eyes and, and it's good. And then I stood up out of the wheelchair and all of a sudden I, I feel like, oof, my ankle like really, really hurts a lot. So yeah, then, then I realized that my ankle was actually uh, worse. Yeah, when, when the doctor told me um, 
about that if I broke that talus, if I had a talus collapse, it's called, if, if my career would be over, I was seriously uh, doubting myself. And actually that, that made me um, yeah, more motivated and I didn't really mentally struggle that much. Normally I'm, I'm super bad in this case, but now I really realized like I want this. I have to work for it if I want to prove that, yeah, I want to be the best in, in short course, in long course, whatever, uh, it has to happen now. I trained a lot in Mallorca, so like, I, I kind of like that thing about Ruby that you go somewhere on a training camp and you kind of can like bring back the memories by doing doing this ride. Like now I think Sacalobra, when I did it in Mallorca was like probably five, six years ago. I don't really have any any rituals before the race because um, like, like I said already like you have to be very adaptable and um, I'm scared that if I make a ritual for myself and it would for some reason it would not be able to do my ritual or I don't know like you always bring your magic underwear or something like that and you forget it at home because you travel a lot and I forget a lot maybe you won't race well so I try to limit that as much as possible I would say that the biggest challenges I faced through my career was especially that I'm not a super good runner and um, especially in the beginning of the career people were not really believing in me and they always thought like oh, like he can never be like uh, at the highest level um, and every time I kind of surprised them so first I was like oh, like he will never be able to uh, race at the top of the Belgian level and then I reached it and then uh, he will never be able to do good at European Cups and I reached it he will never do like become a professional athlete and then I become a professional athlete and like even me I, I would have if you asked me uh, 10 years ago I would have never thought that I, I, I could stand here because um, yeah I was not I was not a good runner and it's still my working point but um, yeah, that's one of the biggest challenges that I've had to, to overcome. How was your ride? Yeah, it was good. I mean, it was mainly an easy ride, except for a couple of sprints, which are probably my least, uh, least favorite thing to do, though. But uh, no, in general, it was good. I thought this morning that it was maybe going to rain, but uh, it ended up being actually quite warm. So that's good. You kind of get used to it because every unexpected thing has happened already in my athlete life because pretty much I've probably done in my career like two, three thousand cycling uh, rides or something like that. So I think when I'm when I'm old and I'm looking back on my life, I would like to yeah live an active life and do what I like to do. And for me now that's this sport triathlon. Um, so I hope to. Uh, yeah, to really still be doing that for a for a long time and if i can hey if i can um can yeah basically just challenge my myself challenge my body challenge see what i can get out of it and for me that would even yeah i have a lot more things that i want to do even than just the competitive side of the sport i would love to yeah do some ultra adventures later on and like maybe do some some of the gravel uh, gravel riding and you see more and more of that kind of things like ultra trails and I think just an active lifestyle uh, and then I will be I will be happy. Swimming pool or open water? Open water. Climbs or flat? Uh, climbs. Beer or wine? Wine. Price or chocolate? Uh, that's a difficult one for a Belgian but probably chocolate. Favorite food? Um, actually Asian, so Pad Thai. What is your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> I, I have no song because I'm super bad, but uh, maybe uh, Vertigo by YouTube. One thing you have to do, have all the time in the fridge? Uh, chocolate. Favorite city? Um, Girona. Favorite movie? Lord of the Rings trilogy. <laughs> Your traffic idol. Um, 
Alistair Brownlee. Uh, the biggest influence in your career? Mark Hermans. And favorite try moment of all time? Probably winning Dubai last year. My uh, three tips to improve every sport in triathlon would be in the swim, get a coach that can be with you and on deck so that he can give you advice on your technique um, because it's very hard to improve it yourself uh, and to know what you're doing wrong. So get someone that can look at you. Then on the bike, it would be to uh, get on the turbo trainer a bit more often. You can really like pack your training in a very efficient and a short way so that you don't have to go for a four hour ride to make it worth it. You can do a lot of work in uh, one hour and on the run, it would be mainly consistency. Um, it's better to run a couple of times a week shorter than run once a long time. So every time that you have like a little bit of free time, put your shoes on. And even if it's just for 20 minutes, it will start adding up in the end and uh, you'll get your volume in. So that's my top tips.